I'm with Chuck Cohen from Intercessors for Israel, and we're talking about Israel's war with Hamas. And my first question, Chuck, is this. Who are Hamas? Hamas is an Islamic fundamentalist terrorist group that's been an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, that's been the Islamic fundamentalist group that's given birth to most of the terror groups. Uh, I think the Islamic Brotherhood started about 1920, and Hamas is, is the... Uh, Palestinian version. They are supported fully by Iran. And uh, it's very interesting, though, that Hamas in Arabic is an acronym. I think it's the Islamic uh, Fundamentalist Movement. I'm not sure what it is. But Hamas in Hebrew, and it's throughout the Old Testament, means violence. Mm. And uh, the psalmist says, uh, in the Hebrew, he says, Lord, save me from the Hamas man, the violent man. And I find that very interesting that Hamas chose Hamas, although in Arabic it means something different than in Hebrew. Mm. So what's Hamas's aims and agenda? Hamas's charter, which anybody can still find on the internet, is to wipe out Israel. Hamas does not want a Palestinian state. Their second aim is to have a worldwide caliphate. They want to have Islam rule the world. Their, their agenda is not for a Palestinian state. Their agenda is not for peace. It's to wipe Israel out because Israel right now is the main stumbling block between Islam conquering the West and setting up a worldwide caliphate. And you can find this on Hamas's charter on the Internet. Now we see a, a big humanitarian crisis in, in Gaza. How come Hamas are able to get guns and weapons and not buy aid for themselves? Well, when you don't care about your people and you're able to smuggle in money, then you can buy the, all the guns and the weapons you need. Uh, Iran is able to send weapons, at least until recently when we put up a blockade, and uh, uh, the Bedouin are able to sneak weapons smuggling over the long border we have between the Negev and the Sinai, and all of this can get into Hamas. They can have plenty of money for that, but they have no money to get their people out of their refugee camps. They have no money to to buy food. They want to keep their people as political pawns. Do you know, uh, ever since 1967, Israel has offered to get the Palestinians out of the refugee camps, build houses for them, not move them away, but build houses in the area. And everyone, including the UN, has said, no, 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 because we want to keep them as political pawns to use against Israel. This is from our latest uh, newsletter, Watchmen from Jerusalem which is available over the internet at the internet site of Intercessors for Israel, www.ifij.org. And we wrote a section on the war against Hamas in Gaza. When we wrote this, it was still raging. To clarify facts that most of the world's media have muddled, here's a short analysis received January 4th from CFI UK, that's Christian Friends of Israel UK Director Jeffrey Smith who started it. On December 19th, Hamas declared it would not renew a six-month ceasefire agreement. Instead, they stepped up rocket fire from Gaza into Israel. On Christmas Eve, 50 rockets. On Christmas Day, over 80 rockets and mortars against Israeli citizens. What nation could ignore these blatant attacks? Uh, Jeffrey Smith asks, is Israel's response disproportionate? What is proportionate? In the last three years, Hamas has fired 5,800 rockets and mortars randomly against Israeli citizens. What would the world say if Israel had done that to Gaza? Israel has targeted Hamas fighters, infrastructure, and smuggling tunnels. Israel has repeatedly said if the rockets stop, it would stop its bombardment. Hamas has continued to fire. Uh, what is the reaction of the Arab powers? No Arab nation would have allowed a neighbor to fire rockets into its sovereign territory. Any Arab state would have reacted far more strongly and would have not been so concerned as Israel to minimize casualties. But what about the humanitarian situation? The people of Gaza are living under a despotic regime. Hamas expelled its opponents by throwing them off high-rise buildings or shooting them. Hamas does not allow other voices in civil society and persecutes the small Christian minority. And I might add that the people in Gaza voted for Hamas and uh, with over 70% of voting for them in the previous elections. Israel has been allowing into Gaza an average of 98 trucks daily. This is during the war. Now, Israel's left-leaning president, Shimon Peres, who's big on the new Middle East and wanting a peace process, made a statement to the media. He said, Israel left Gaza completely. 
We suggested aid in many ways, economic, medical, otherwise. I have not heard now, until now, a single person who can explain to us, why are they firing rockets at us? There's one other thing that I need to say, and that is, is that many people believe that the reason Hamas did not renew the ceasefire and continued and, and started this war was to divert attention from Iran. Iran is on the verge of uh, building nuclear weapons. And in fact, there was a French report that came out in December that said that Iran is very close. And at that point, Iran loosed Hamas to divert world attention from uh, Iran. And I think it's worked. And so now what are we facing? We really didn't win the war in Gaza. And Iran is much further on with their intention to develop nuclear weapons with the new president of the United States, Obama, wanting to sit down and have tea with them as opposed to in any way seriously trying to stop them. Now, over 6,000 rockets have hit Israel in the last eight years. What's life been like for the towns of Starot and Ashdod and Ashkelon? Actually, I, 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 6,000 rockets have hit Israel just recently and uh, uh, probably close to 10,000. And, and life is hell. Uh, you have teenage children still wetting their beds because of fear. You have children who are not allowed to play outside in the sun. Uh, 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 the children who uh, whose parents are frantic if they go to school. Uh, it, 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 it's incredible. It's like being raised in the Blitz. That's all I can say. It may not be as as uh, intensive as the Blitz was, but it's that same type of attitude. And for those people back in, in uh, Britain who can understand that, they understand immediately what I'm talking about. You never know. You can walk outside and a bomb can hit you. Except with the Blitz, you had a lot more warning than we have here. 15 seconds, and then you got to find shelter when the alarm goes off. Uh, Hamas's rockets capability getting better and better. Could they reach, for instance, Tel Aviv or Jerusalem? They definitely could reach Tel Aviv if we don't do something about it. They've reached Ashkelon and Ashdod. You know, Paul, when we pulled out of Gaza, those of us who understood uh, the dangers warned about this. And people to the center and the left and the Peace Now people said, no, 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 this would never happen. Ah, this is crazy. All of a sudden, what we said is happening. And people are still willing to go ahead and now have us pull out of Judea and Samaria and Fatah uh, is terrified that Hamas is going to take over from there then you won't need an improved rocket capability to have rockets Hamas already has hitting, Ash, uh, hitting Jerusalem and Tel Aviv now over a thousand Palestinians were killed in the Gaza conflict and that figures comes from the Palestinian sources so do you think these figures are correct? do they lie about uh, things like this? They can lie about it. Uh, the IDF has said that 1,300 people were killed, 1,300 Palestinians, and of that, they said at least 75% were terrorists, were specifically targeted terrorists. Where did the rest come from? Well, Hamas sets up its rockets and its weapons in mosques, in homes, in hospitals, and this time Israel decided not to play Mr. Nice Guy. We decided to go after wherever they were shooting from, and that's where people got injured from. But, you know, according to the international laws of war, the Fourth Geneva Convention and other international laws of war, if an attacking army hides itself behind civilians, those civilian deaths are the responsibility of the attacking army. Now, to me, it seems like a miracle that very few soldiers were killed in, from the Israeli army side. Would you say that was a miracle? It definitely was a miracle. It was a miracle... Uh, but it also was a learning curve from the 2006 Lebanese war. Uh, the army really did the job it was supposed to do. It learned from its very poor showing in 2006, and this time we really put the kibosh on the enemy. And what was it, 10 or 12 Israeli soldiers got killed, of which half of them were killed by friendly fire, which is terrible. But it shows how, how much of a terror Hamas was to us when we really want to go to do it. Now, you've had sons that have been in the army, although they weren't in Gaza. What was it like for the, the mood of the nation and for the, for the father and the mother who had a son who was going into Gaza at that time? We had a number of believers who had sons in the army, and they were sending out emails about prayer, and please keep us in prayer, and this and that. Of course, for believers, uh, we have that advantage. Whether we live or die, we're with the Lord. So although 
the death of a believer is, especially in a war situation, is nothing to laugh about. There's hope in the grave. There is hope. And we see, you know, the biggest difference between the reality of what we believe, Yeshua's death, burial, and resurrection, is the fact that, uh, and I've been a pastor for multitudes of years, doing a funeral, a believer's funeral, although there is sadness and grief, there's a certain joy. It's, it's like being at a graduation ceremony. Okay? Whereas we've seen unbelievers, Israelis, who have no idea of a living God, just weeping and crying without any hope over the grave. I don't know what it must be like for, for a parent who does not believe in God or eternal life to have to send their sons or daughters into war. It's, it's got to be terrible. We need to pray for this nation to come to a full knowledge of their Messiah, Yeshua. Now the media have a, a big job of getting the, the, the stories out. Uh, do you think the media were accurate in this time in, in the war in Gaza? You know, the media has a very hard time being accurate when it reports about Israel in almost any time, whether it's the Christian media or not. And uh, I think that the media tries to do as good a job as it can, unless it has an agenda. And we have seen too many media reports who believe what Hamas says more than what believe what Israel says, or who believe what the Palestinians say more than what they believe Israel says, to where Israel always ends up to be the bad guy. And uh, I'm not sure if part of that is still the guilt of the Holocaust, and if only uh, the Europeans can feel like, hey, look, Israeli is doing to the Palestinians what, the, what we did to them, then we can feel better about it. But it's just a ridiculous scenario. And the media has gotten away from reporting facts and is now reporting its opinion for the most part. Thank God for people like you who are trying to get truth across. <laughs> so how do you pray for a terrorist organization such as Hamas? One of, ha uh, one of Hamas's leaders had a son, and that son is now a born-again believer. And he's done a number of interviews, and you can catch that on the Fox News channel and probably look it up on the Internet. A son of Hamas leader, Christian type of thing. Uh, we got to pray for their salvation. There is no other hope than salvation. The good news is that multitudes of Muslims are coming to know the Lord. Multitudes of, not multitudes, but many, many terrorists are actually getting turned around. Not just Islamic terrorists, but terrorists in Colombia, terrorists in other areas are coming to know the Lord. The only hope of anyone, whether you're a terrorist or not, is to know the Lord Yeshua. And uh, so for Hamas, we often pray, Lord, confound those who hate Zion. May their attacks not succeed so that they know they're fighting you, and then they can turn around and come to know you. It's great to hear that people have been saved. Well, Chuck, thank you very much for, for your time. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure, Paul.